Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt School of Medicine. I'm here today with Walt Gall. He is a 2002 graduate of the Department of Molecular Biology. So welcome, Walt. We're glad to have you. Yeah, good to be here. Um, so tell us about what you did while you were here at Vanderbilt. So I basically rotated in a couple of microbiology labs uh, with the interdisciplinary graduate program. Uh, also uh, rotated in uh, Todd Graham's lab, uh, which is a yeast genetics lab, principally studying protein trafficking and ended up doing my thesis there. Um, so what do you do now? Uh, right now I do uh, strategy consulting with early stage portfolio companies in the biotech and tech space. Okay. Um, how did you get that job? Uh, I created it. <laughs> so, Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, basically I uh, worked for a biotech company for several years. I had been in different uh, companies in the industry uh, after my postdoc and uh, ended up uh, getting tapped on the shoulder to uh, go to dinner with the CEO after giving a talk at a conference one time. And they were having some interesting challenges within their company with regulatory discussions and just R&D issues. And uh, he, he basically wanted to see if I actually advised companies. And that, that's basically started my consulting career at that point. Okay. So what, is, what exactly does a strategy consultant do? So essentially, uh, strategy consulting comprises strategic planning and implementation. So typically you're working with executive teams. It's in the umbrella of management consulting, essentially. Uh, but uh, the area that I really focus on is working with CEOs and their uh, executive peers on basically positioning their company, uh, whether it's in front of investors, you know, helping them with their investor pitch if they're raising money, uh, or actually positioning them for business development or corporate development goals. And um, that can comprise trying to position their company for acquisition uh, or position their company with a certain business model, with a product they're launching. Uh, that, that's essentially what strategy consulting consists of okay. in, in my world right now. So what does your typical day look like? Uh, my typical day is uh, typically <laughs> <laughs> riding to the airport. <laughs> so I was joking with my family uh, just uh, the other day coming home from uh, a weekend uh, with one of our, uh, with one of the investors I work with in my network. And uh, we have friends in Houston. And when we got back in town, uh, I was laughing. I was like, when I put in this ticket, I, I should get, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> welcome back home. You know, <laughs> I feel like the parking garage is my office uh, parking uh, as far as the airport. So yeah, I, I spend my time between New York and, and the West Coast. So how is being a strategy consultant a good fit for you, skill-wise? Uh, I've always been a big picture guy uh, as far as you know, uh, coming up with different ideas, uh, you know, whether it's marketing, whether it's you know, product development, um, getting alignment with uh, different stakeholders you know, within a company or even external from the company, whether it's investors or um, stakeholders you have to position your company in front of, whether it's a regulatory agency, whether it's you know, a partner um, you know, as far as business development. All of those things um, I learned when I was at a biotech company kind of rising through the ranks and uh, how important that is to satisfy each of those stakeholders and really make sure that each of the things that you're doing and developing a product um, you have a strategy, a very cohesive strategy in place that, that sort of meets those criteria. And um, being a big, per big picture type of person, uh, th you basically think of all those chess pieces, basically. So would you say that a postdoc is required, recommended for this kind of industry or uh, For me, it was uh, good to do a postdoc. I wanted to keep doors open. I was still considering academia. Uh, I had opportunities to actually interact with industry uh, as I was finishing my fellowship, uh, which basically gave me that taste to kind of go forward with that. I knew I was interested in entrepreneurship. And um, yeah, so uh, I would say if you have questions about which sort of path you're going to go down, I, I would certainly advise you know, doing a postdoc. But it's certainly not a requirement if you kind of know early on yeah, you know, if you're gonna move, you know, in a different direction, but I think uh, industry 
respects your publication sort of record, uh, even if you're going to, you know, you know you're not going to go down an academic path, uh, I still think that's a worthwhile effort. Uh, and plus, you know, when I was at uh, the startup Metabolon, uh, you know, I had several publications, you know, from being there for you know, several years. So that, that, that was just part of uh, the job effort at the same time doing, you know, a business development and marketing and all those other things that are peripheral to that. Okay. So what skill sets did you have to develop once you left Vanderbilt and got into the working world? Uh, I think you can never uh, stop honing your skills on networking. Uh, that That's essentially, you know, really positioned myself for every job that I've ever uh, received is, is uh, building your network because throughout your career, it just keeps growing. And you never know where that opportunity is going to lie, whether it's a business development discussion or whether it's you know a new career path. Uh, so I would say early on, it's not necessarily something I had to learn, but it's something you just you need to cultivate and be natural, you know, to to do to doing that and understanding, um, you know, what different settings are are out there, you know, in, in the particular place you live and work. So how would you define networking? What do you do to network specifically? Uh, anytime I'm uh, traveling, I you know call up old friends. I you know have different business meetings. Each of those business meetings, typically, there's always an introduction, you know, to other people, and just staying in contact. You know, when it makes sense to stay in contact with those people, just staying really engaged with each with each of the people that you meet along the way uh, is, I think, an important process. Okay. So, how did you um, get your current job? Was that through networking also? Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I was giving a talk and uh, at a conference, and uh, had an opportunity to advise a company, and that took a little bit more of my time as that relationship grew, and so then I decided to you know start my own uh, consulting business. Okay. What uh, what job search and uh, career tips do you have for um, our trainees? You know, as they look for their career. Uh, I would say just be very eager at looking at, you know, all, all the different avenues that are in front of you. Uh, like when I was, uh, you know, doing my fellowship, uh, I basically was very interested in, like I said, startups and sort of the entrepreneurial process. And so I did some moonlighting with the tech transfer office. And that was an interesting interface because you're basically interacting with, uh, you know, serial entrepreneurs, you're dealing with service providers, you know, the legal uh, side of things as far as the lawyers involved with the IP. Uh, you're dealing with, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, types of uh, folks as far as on the business side, um, you know, people that have different skill sets, you know, that'll form a company, you know, on the marketing side, on the sales side, et cetera. So you, you get to um, know what kind of flavor of uh, a size of a company that you want to actually work for. Um, because in those same networking settings, you know, I'd be interacting with uh, corporate executives, and I actually you know, worked at uh, Beckton Dickinson uh, through that networking opportunity, um, and that, that was a, a key integral step in, in moving to a company that was actually incubated within that company, uh, which was Metabolon, which is a startup. And uh, so I, I would say just always be open to uh, interacting and learning from other people's professions because you, you kind of learn the legal perspective, the business perspective, the R&D perspective, and you kind of figure out where your niche is. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've had to interview a few times for a job. Do you have any positive or negative experiences that you'd want to share that students could empathize with? <laughs> uh, I, I would say um, on the positive side, uh, you research whatever company or whatever you know institute that you're applying for. Uh, you know, you, you want to know it almost as well as you know whoever's interviewing you, so that you can really kind of address why you're interested in the job, uh, why you're kind of passionate about you know actually joining that group, and uh, impress them that that you can contribute and add value you know to 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 that organization. So I would say do your homework. Uh, is, is the key tip there, and uh, show that you've been passionate and very productive at, at each of the, your you know, previous uh, occupations. Okay. Uh, what do you wish you knew uh, as a postdoc or as a PhD that you know now? I would say uh, just 
don't be shy. I mean, about learning from your mistakes. You know, if you take a, a wrong job or t- you know you have a mistake, you know, with, within a, a certain job, you know, I think honesty is obviously always the, the right path, and, and just being transparent with your supervisor, your team. Uh, you know, people understand people make mistakes, and that's part of doing business. In fact, if you're not making mistakes, you're probably not taking enough risk. And uh, so, so as long as that's measured and you learn from those things, uh, you're well respected. And uh, if you have an interface, you know, with the upper management, uh, and you have that visibility, you know, with whatever you know particular job you have, uh, that's also important to to maintain that engagement. Um, as far as you know, how you want to be successful and kind of rise through the ranks. Okay, tell me about your work life balance. What that looks like. Uh, so there's different ramp up periods with different jobs. Uh, so having an understanding spouse uh, is helpful if you have to do a lot of travel, uh, which in my case I do have to do that quite a bit. Uh, but once you get things sort of you know in a measured pace at a certain cadence, uh, you know you can manage that a little bit better. But I, I would say uh, whenever you are home, <laughs> in my case, uh, you you make sure that you're you know just very dedicated to to the home front. And uh, I've always uh, definitely struck a, a good work-life balance, uh, and you know, I have three kids, and you know, love my time with my whole family, and uh, you know, and, and there, I actually will take them occasionally when I can, you know, on work trips, um, you know, if you know, if it makes sense, and uh, you know, share part of a weekend, you know, as part of that process. So I think it's very important to keep uh, that, you know, in, in a in a part of your sort of a budget of time, if you will, because they, they basically learn from what you do, which I think is obviously a great learning experience, you know, uh, above and beyond just the, the school and the summer activities. Yeah. What words of wisdom do you have for the current PhDs and postdocs as they start their job search? Network, network, network. <laughs> I mean, because you're going to learn, you know, from others, you know, what their experiences are, positive or negative. Uh, you know, people that are usually networking are um, out there and, and you know very communicative about what they do and are typically you know very engaged with helping others. You know, as far as introductions, telling people about you know about what they do, and uh, but the important step in that is is staying engaged. You know, like keeping those relationships, uh, like I said before, cultivated. And so I would say, uh, you know, with uh, you know emails and uh, different meeting opportunities, uh, it's very important to uh, stay engaged uh, with with all those different uh, you know, folks that you might come across at meetings, at different networking receptions at a university setting uh, or a seminar setting. You know, as far as company startups, you know, it just depends on what your your sort of uh, interests are. Um, but I, I would say. Uh, if there's an opportunity to actually do some volunteer work, you know, from an intern point of view, or you know, volunteer on helping out with a business plan, or you know, whatever your interests might be, you know, kind of, you know, take that extra step uh, of initiative, and people really appreciate that, and they remember those interactions and those positive experiences that you build with those people, you know, may end up, you know, being a, a professional opportunity that you actually join a company. And so, so it's important to just kind of get yourself out there and uh, be open to lots of different possibilities. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. We're glad to have you back. So. Yeah, it's a pleasure.